go within your mind. That's where meditation comes in. You know, go within your mind. Sink down beneath these clouds of darkness of the ego. You can just kind of meditate. Sink past them and go down beneath them. To this, the kingdom of heaven is literally within your own mind. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. And the course is also a path whereas if you have trouble meditating, relationships really speed things up <laughs> because all of these unconscious beliefs that you've got in your mind, we were talking about at dinner, where you know, you're so convinced, my mama raised me this way, and I know that this is the way that's right and best and good, and then you get married, and your spouse says, well, my mom and dad raised me this way, <laughs> and you may think that this is it, but this is it. <clears throat> And then all of a sudden you see that you seem to have an, uh, a conflict of interest. All the Course is saying is, it's like two egos duking it out, you know. But the Course is saying, when you, let, when you let aside your ego and you listen to the Holy Spirit, then you'll have harmony because you'll be listening to the same voice. What I'm hearing is talking about cause and effect, really listing these effects, these things that happen and how we react to the effects. If, if I hear you correctly, if we live life working on the side of cause, always being part of the cause, not the effect. If you're the effect, the reaction to the effect, you're on the negative side. Yes. You're on the positive side, if you're constantly being the cause. Not a god, you're not a god, but you're the cause. Yes. The miracle. In other words, the Court says that you're dreaming a dream of fragmentation. In other words, God did not make this dream of fragmentation. It's a projection from your mind. But the first thing you have to do is you have to return, turn around cause and effect. You believe you're the victim of this world that you've made up. And as long as you continue to believe that you're this innocent victim with no power, then you're stuck. So first he says, turn cause and effect around. That's what you're saying. And then quickly give cause over to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit knows that, that there is no real cause for this world because the ego isn't real. I mean, God didn't create the ego. So what you have to do, instead of a direct approach to love, you know, or picking up a book that you're going to learn love, it's, it's exposing the ego. And every time you're tempted to blame, to blame your spouse, to blame your job, to blame the IRS, or to blame something, the dog or something, you can choose a miracle. And all a miracle does is remind you, remember, cause and effect. And quickly then, the, the miracle also reminds you that, that since this thing doesn't really have the power to take your peace away, then the thing that seemed to cause it must not be real either. So that the more that we transfer this and take this and practice it in our daily lives, we get better and better and better at realizing that there's nothing in this world that can take our peace away. Until finally we generalize it to everything. You know, first we start off with certain things, because we're afraid. You know, we're afraid to, to do this, try to practice this all the time. But what we do is we practice little by little, and the more we start to generalize it, the more we become convinced that there's nothing in this world that can take away our peace. We then, instead of being this little bitty dream figure, this little body that's subject to all these forces in the world, we see ourselves as the dreamer of the dream. Just like at nighttime, you know. When you're, when you're sleeping at night and you go to bed and you seem to have all these things that happen at night and all these dreams and then you wake up and you go, phew, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that was just a dream. The Course is saying that there'll come a time when you like hear only the voice for God, the Holy Spirit, and you go, phew, that was just a dream. And you wake up, in a sense, to the Kingdom of Heaven. To me, this really makes a lot of sense because, you know, the more instead of just kind of reading it and, and talking about it, the more you actually go and apply it, the more joyful your life gets. You know what I mean? You can actually sense real shifts in <coughs> place in your life. And, and it's like it's all the proof in the pudding, so to speak, you know, that the more you start feeling peaceful, that, that the more, you know, you know you're moving along. Then, of course, also the Course is kind of saying that there is no compromise between everything and nothing. So that if you, like, transcend the ego 99.99%, it still hurts because the Course is saying basically as long as you have even a scrap of fear in your mind, then the ego still has like a toe in the door. And that's why Jesus it was such a, that's why he's literally our way shower because when he completely, 100% transcended the ego, that's, that's where he became a model for us and that he's not tempted anymore by the ego.
he knows it's, he knows it's, it's false completely. When he meditates, how can you communicate, or who do you communicate with, and what do you communicate with, and how do you communicate, or what do you see, or... I don't know how to meditate. How do you meditate? I see meditation as really just trying to be very receptive. In other words, uh, there's a lot of chatter when you first start out. The ego does not like this, this idea at all. Because the ego knows that if you get real still, you're going to start hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and Jesus, or, or whoever, however you want to call it, intuition or whatever. And the ego is very threatened by that. So there's this shrieking and this swirl of, you know, sometimes this yakety yak 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 chatter that goes on. Oh, I gotta take care of this. I gotta remember to go to the bank, and oh, I gotta remember to pick up the kids. And you know how the mind just wants to race in there. It just does not. At the beginning, it doesn't. It's not used to the stillness. But as you just use the um, lessons of the workbook, Jesus has put in the workbook um, meditation, guided meditation. It's, it's like it's all part of the book. I mean, he's, he's, he's even got that covered where he starts out real gradual, and in the early lessons he doesn't hardly put any structure, you know, because he knows that, that you know, it, it takes willingness just to be able to, to, to really put your life to this course, much less to expect miracles and wonders right off the bat. So he, he starts off real gradual, and then little by little, you know, he introduces some structures. And the only reason he introduces structures is because he knows the mind is very untrained, and it needs a certain amount of structure. But, but he quickly, as, as you go along the lessons later on, he, he lets that go more and more because he doesn't want you to get into rituals. <laughs> you know, I'll read my course every day at this time. I'll do it so many hours a day and this and that. He doesn't want, the ego's going to try to get in there any way it can, you know, to make a ritual out of it. You know, like they did the Holy Communion, you know, stuff like that. So it's all in the book in the sense that he'll say something like, um, try to settle down now. Sit quietly. Try to watch your thoughts as just passionately as possible as they come and go. If it helps you, think of them as like an oddly assorted parade going by. <laughs> he's, he's giving you all kinds of little analogies and metaphors because he knows that you're you're not new you're new to this meditation business. And he knows that you need some structure and guidance. So he literally if I look at this, this really there are parts in the in the lessons that compare to like Zen mind training exercises where literally it's, it's trying to be as dispassionate and watch the thoughts go by. So that's what makes it so neat is that he's got, he knows that's what's going to happen and he's, he's prepared. You know, he's, he's got a, 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 it's almost like a master psychologist designed these 365 lessons because, you know, they are really, really uh, well suited to an untrained mind. And initially when there's so much chatter, it's kind of like, well, just watch those thoughts. You know, don't judge them. You know, just watch them, let them keep going by, just watch them go by, you know, and then later in the, in the workbook, it's like, think beneath the thought. If you don't start out thinking, you know, there's mm -hmm. too much too much going on, there's too much chatter there. It's only later through, through the whole training program that you know, you get to the point of thinking beneath those thoughts, and that's when your mind does start to come to some stillness and real receptivity. Thoughts are like trains, you know, they talk about train of thoughts, they keep going through like this, and basically, you know, you're sitting there, you're, you're just real detached, and you're watching some of the trains go by, and then before you know it, you're on the train. One train leads to the next, you know, that experience of like, it starts along one line of thinking, and then before you know it, it's like, and then you wait, but wait a minute here, <laughs> and then you hop off the train, then you hop back on, invariably, then you hop off, without judging, then you hop on, and it's kind of like, that's what, this happens with, with meditation is at the beginning, you know, you're going to hop on some of those trains and some of those trains are even going to even be thoughts like, I'll never get this. I'm not making any progress. This is going to take, I don't know how to do this. So those are ego thoughts. You know, ego, those are trains. And then you hop off and you go, okay. You know, another way you can do it is, is with your thoughts. Well, one way we heard in Christian science one time was when you have thoughts that are going through your mind, and you're not sure whether they're ego or Holy Spirit thoughts, you know, which can, can seem confusing sometimes, just put, say it's the Lord at the tail end of the thought. <laughs> just put, say it's the Lord at the tail end of the thought. And if it sounds ludicrous, you know, like, 
you know, I can't believe that person did that, 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 say it's the Lord. <laughs> you can imagine Jesus, you know, complaining about something, you know, it's ridiculous you go, let that one go. But, you know, there's little techniques or whatever that you can kind of come into and to start to identify and sort out in your own mind these two, two thoughts of them. In this sequence of turning, mind turning, and meditation, where in that does, does it say it very clearly in some way that your thoughts don't mean anything? And then recognize them for what they are and what comes up. Uh, that has to be all for me. That would have to be way under into this series. I, I know what you're talking about, but I don't, I can't yeah. get it in, in part. Well, that's, we could talk just a little bit briefly about the workbook in the sense that. Um, the lessons rotate back and forth from what you think you see out there in the world to what you're thinking in your mind. Because to the untrained mind, what's out in the world seems a lot different than what's in my mind. In other words, behavior is like sometimes you might have had this thing going to a party and you really start judging somebody. And it's like then you have the thought, boy, I'm glad they don't know what I'm thinking about. You know, or something like that. Because the mind believes that it's private, you know. It doesn't believe minds are connected. So, so what Jesus says is he goes about, like the first lesson is talking about the perceptual world. Nothing I see means anything, which is quite a, a great one to start off with. Like, hey, what? <laughs> but he starts off with nothing I see means anything. Then the second lesson continues with, I have given everything I see all the meaning that it has for me. This is that you were talking about perception, about how everybody reads meaning, you know, kind of into what they see. And... You know, the best example of that is that, you know, a group of five or ten people go to a movie and then you sit around and talk about the movie afterwards, you know, boy, you know, you get five, ten different views about, what do you mean she was, she was a victim or whatever, you know, I thought she was doing great, I thought she was empowered, she was trying to do that, you know, and you can hear all these different interpretations, that the second lesson brings it back to, I have given everything I see all the meaning that it has to me, the meaning is coming from my mind, it's not the the events are giving me meaning for telling me how things are happening. But then it's, it's what I think what um, Pat is talking about is lesson four. Literally, he says these thoughts do not mean anything. 